Hey guys, Scott and Nate from playercourt.com and today we're going to talk about tracking the ball for better contact. All right guys, so today we're talking about tracking the ball for better contact. To be clear, this video is for players with a player court rating of 60 and below. If you're not familiar with our rating system or our community, a player court rating of 60 is the equivalent of a USTA 3.5. So Nate's going to go ahead and take it from here. All right, guys, so we're going to talk about how to track the ball for better contact. All right, and what is tracking? All right, tracking are visual cues of what we're looking to get an indicator of the path of the ball. So how do we know if the ball is going deep? The thing that we're looking for is a ball moving high above the net, typically at least four feet, but on an average of six to eight above the net. All right, and the ball moving fairly fast. And that's gonna give us a pretty good indicator that the ball is coming deep and we need to move away from the ball. If the ball is below four feet, we still may need to move up to the ball, but if the ball is particularly fast, we don't need to overplay by rushing the ball. But if the ball is below four feet and going slow, we really need to hustle up to this ball. All right? So one of the major mistakes that we see with contact due to a tracking error is that we rush up to a ball and we try to hit it while it's ascending. All right? And so this may look familiar, but some of us out here are moving up to balls and we're getting caught with this chicken wing jammed up. And we think it's a faulty forehand and what it is, it's faulty tracking leading to poor contact. So what it should feel like is the racket is using gravity to fall and work up the ball. And if we're not feeling that, there's an error unless we're intentionally driving, but this typically happens at a much higher level, all right? So let's back it up for a second. So how can I fix this problem? The ball is coming in heavy. It's got a, a height above six feet, and it's coming in fairly fast. What I'm gonna do is, as I'm taking my racket back through its unit turn, I'm also gonna move my feet to get away from the ball, let the ball descend, let the ball drop, and this may be more than two steps. I may have to find myself all the way back behind the court, and from here as the ball is descending, I find gravity to help me hit through the ball, creating better contact and a better swing path. So that's gonna solve, that's gonna really help us with some of the deep balls. With the short balls, again, we're looking for a ball that's below four feet, and we're looking for a lack of speed. And on this ball, we want to be a little quicker up to it. One of my favorite sayings is fast feet and slow hands, or uh, hurry up and wait, right? Because that's really what we're doing. We're going to get up to this ball really fast, and then we're going to slow down and move our feet to get into position. So what we're going to do now is Scott and I are going to show you a drill without rackets to help us track the ball and improve our tracking for better contact. All right, guys, as you can see, we got Scott to join us, and we're going to practice tracking the ball. And as you've noticed, we don't have tennis rackets. All we need is this tennis ball. I mean, really, any ball we can practice tracking. Um, it should probably be a tennis ball. Don't use a football, all right? But an eight ball, preferably a tennis ball, is, uh, is preferred. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you what this looks like. We're going to demonstra demonstrate this now. All right, guys, we've got Scott back at the baseline. Um, one of the major things that we're going to focus on here, though, is when Scott goes to catch this ball, he wants to put an emphasis on keeping his elbow in. And this is going to kind of demo what your forehand would feel like. All right? Obviously, if you're reaching out for the ball, you're going to be out of your strike zone. So catching the ball, we want the elbow in to make sure that we're tracking to the correct strike zone. All right, and the first one that we're going to do is we're going to get Scott moving with a, a, a drop step, perhaps a side shuffle letting that ball descend to a second bounce. So you can see there he would have been swinging low to high. We'll do it again. We'll give him a little bit more height, a little bit more depth. All right, and then let's go ahead and dem demonstrate that real quick, what it looks like when we're doing it incorrectly. He's got a lot of height. He's moving up to it. All right, and obviously jammed up. The strike zone gets really complicated. So there, backing up is obviously going to be the solution. All right, so now, I'm going to leave the ball a whole lot lower. We're going to have those margins where the ball is below four feet on the net. It's going to have a lot less pace. I'm not throwing any of these super hard, but this one's going to be pretty light. Let's get them moving. All right. Let's do it one more time. A little bit tougher. Let's get them moving. Uh, you're limber for a big guy. I do my best. All right. All right. So get out there with the buddy. 
with your friends, all right, and try this. All right, this is something that seems, I know it seems like it's very kind of simple. It's actually a drill that we, we did in college and that you'll actually see a lot of the pros do it. Now they will make it more dynamic. If this is relatively easy for you, let's, let's let, make it a little bit more difficult with two balls. All right, so here I go deep to Scott. He's catching, he's gonna toss it back to me and I immediately give him another ball that he's moving to. So now we speed it up by introducing two balls to it. Ooh. Let's do two more. Mess with me, I'm out of breath, Nate. <laughs> Gotta hit that cardio, my dude. No. Back. All right, and awesome drill where he's working on tracking the ball and immediately if he gets out and hits, He's going to start realizing, he's going to be watching the ball closer to see what height, what speed it's clearing the net, and he's going to be able to swing more efficiently for better contact. By practicing this simple drill, you're going to improve your tracking in no time. So as deep as our coaching experience is, we don't know anything about your game and we want to help you improve. So do us a favor, click the button below, answer a couple questions for us about your game so we can make sure we're giving you the appropriate footwork for your skill level. Click the button below, we'll do the rest.